Welcome everyone to today's session on how to use HOPEX to do business capability mapping. My name is Rashi Batnagar and I'm a pre-sales engineer with MEGA and I will be the one giving you your demonstration today. Before we get started, a little bit more about the company itself. MEGA has 28 years of experience in the enterprise architecture space. We are present in 52 countries and have over 2,000 enterprise customers using the platform. Some of the key challenges we've noticed with capability management is often that business strategy is constantly evolving and it's difficult for IT to stay up to date with the strategic discussions occurring at the business level. What this basically results, is, results in is when IT resource planning is happening, they don't actually understand which business capabilities are planned and how they fit with the business strategy. Therefore, it makes it difficult for IT projects to be planned and prioritized based on business objectives, often leading to wrong IT investment. To alleviate these symptoms, HOPEX IT Business Management presents three key features to help you with your capability-based management. First, you want to plan your IT. This includes mapping your business capabilities and functionalities, building those strategic roadmaps. Then you want to optimize your IT. This requires rationalizing your IT portfolio, creating those dashboards and those ID cards for your application and technology so that you have a robust repository. Then you want to lead into your transformation. Here you begin identifying your transformation projects, understanding your what if analysis, and prioritizing the work that needs to be done. We are presenting to you four outcome driven use cases to accelerate your transformation. These use cases can be used individually and build upon each other as you continue to grow, starting with creating an IT inventory landscape working towards rationalizing, mitigating, and aligning your business. I also want to mention that we are, we provide several open APIs and out of the box integrations so that you can quickly onboard and start realizing the benefits from the HOPEX platform without having to recreate the inventory that you may already have in-house. That being said, let's go ahead and dive straight into our demonstration today. As you'll see, I am logged into the HOPEX platform. Now to leverage HOPEX to create business capability maps, we want to follow the three-step methodology of plan, optimize, and transform. The first step is going to be to identify the key value chains and focus on the capabilities that are important to you. What you're seeing in front of you right now is a value stream within the HOPEX context. In this example, we are taking a look at the process for deliver travel package. We see our three stages of organizing itinerary and booking tickets, organizing payments and confirming reservations and delivering those tickets. At the bottom of these stages, we see our individual capabilities that are associated. With HOPEX, you have the ability in the diagram of the value stream itself to start understanding the context of your capabilities. This will help inform the decision on what you want to improve. But we can take it a step further. Let's go ahead and take a look at a report that's available to us. Again, out of the box. And here we're going to be able to see all of our capabilities having been assessed against four criteria business value, capability effectiveness, capability efficiency, and financial impact. And we can begin understanding the three capabilities that are going to be impacted because of this value stream. How are they actually ranking according to these particular assessments? When it comes to customer requests and efficiency, we can see as a capability, it's not very efficient. The same can be said for finance. But since we are looking at it from the perspective of a value stream, we know that these capabilities are important. Therefore, we want to be able to prioritize the projects that IT will put in place so that we can start alleviating some of the symptoms that are occurring because of this assessment and therefore move our entire enterprise transformation forward into a direction where we can become more efficient. 
now that we've understand the scope of the business capabilities that we want to focus on, we must create the strategy that informs our transformation plan. So here we're going to take a look at a strategy diagram. In our strategy diagram, we have the ability to go ahead and understand what is our goal, what are the individual steps, again, these are the transformation steps that we're going to take, what are the objectives that we're trying to accomplish, the tactics and the strategies that we're going to put in place in order to accomplish this, part this particular goal. Now, when we're thinking about transformation projects, it's not only important to have a high level understanding of what we're trying to do, what goal we're trying to address, what objective we're trying to address, but it's also important to be able to understand what's happening at every step of the way. So let's actually take a look at that. We're going to begin understanding what our capabilities are going to be for each one of the steps of our transformation project. Now, this is very important to us because we know that as we go through our transformation, as we go from step one to step two, things are going to change. That's what we've defined as part of our strategy. That's, uh, those are the projects that are going to go underway. But we want to be able to visualize that in our capability reports as well. So here you're seeing that as part of step one, I have two capabilities customer request and trip management that are actually not currently present in my enterprise. They are the scope of work that needs to be done. If we go to step two, we will see that in our capability map, both of those capabilities have now become implemented in the sense that they're not going to be read anymore. So customer support or sorry, customer request and trip management have both um, not, they're no longer read anymore, and they are both present in the capability map, implying that the work done between step one and step two is going to lead towards being able to implement this particular capability. Now, that's at a high level what's going on um, between the two steps. If we want to start talking about the actual timeline and the actual projects that are going to go underway, we can take a look at a Gantt report. And in this report, we're going to be able to understand um, the different projects that are planned, as well as the impact over time. So you'll see that we have our as-is phase, our step one, and our step two. As part of the as-is phase, we're going to be collecting that inventory of our capabilities, our value streams. Then we're going to start working on two separate projects to create uh, two new applications the impact of which is going to be to bring those two capabilities we just saw to life. We can see we also have another project that's going to be underway for step two. Now at a high level, HOPEX has allowed you to integrate the information from your strategy, your capabilities, and your project all into the same landscape. There is another view that I want to present, uh, present to you today, and that's going to be the impact of the enterprise stages, the capabilities, and the applications themselves. So this report takes the information that we saw a few moments ago and renders it from a different perspective for you. We're still talking about those steps, step one, step two for our enterprise, sorry, for our transformation program. We're still looking at all of the capabilities that were present in our capability map, but now we are taking into account the difference in applications. We're beginning to understand what are the applications? Are they going to be replaced? Is there no application present? And by step two, are we going to be introducing a new application? This report really helps us understand um, what we need to do in terms of impact so that we're able to either bring a capability on board or mitigate the differences between uh, a capabilities as is and to be evolution. Once we know what capabilities are in our scope, we have defined our strategy. Now we are ready to begin assessing that impact of change. Now this is where our capability report that we saw earlier comes into view, but from a different perspective. Now we're going to be focusing on the artifacts within the capability report itself rather than the high-level capabilities. Let's take that customer request example again. 
we can see that we have a few different applications that are connected to this particular capability. We can also see that when being evaluated for business value, the billing application, according to our legend, is providing poor business value. So we know that customer request is a new capability that we want to onboard as part of our capability-based planning. And we see that billing is providing poor business value. What this tells me is that we are ready to start diving deeper into the world of billing to really understand what's happening here. More specifically, what's the impact of this application to my environment? In this report, we're able to see that billing is connected to three other applications. There are inbound and outbound flows that connect billing to other applications, therefore telling me that if I'm going to be changing this application, decommissioning it or replacing it, I need to be cognizant of the impact it will have on other apps. If we scroll down a little bit, the next report is going to show me the installation and use of this particular application. We see that billing the application has instances in US, Europe, and in Asia that are then being utilized by different organizational units. So we can begin understanding the impact not only at a global level, but also at a departmental level. The third report allows us to begin understanding how many capabilities is the billing application connected to, what technologies does it rely on, business lines and processes that it's a part of, again, to really help us scope out the level of effort that is going to be required to change and transform this particular application. Our last step in this, our last step today is going to be monitoring our transformation projects. In order to do that, I want to introduce three different reports to you. The first is going to be the project roadmap report. Now in this report, you're going to get that same familiar view we saw of the Gantt chart with the different projects through time. And below, we're going to get a consolidated view of the status. Are these projects actually on time? And what are the deliverables of these particular projects? Really, again, tying in the scope of the work we're doing with why we are doing it. The next report allows us to understand from a financial perspective, what is the impact of the projects that I'm going to be undertaking? So here we can see these are different projects that are candidate projects, meaning that they're still being evaluated from the perspective of, are they going to be adding value to our company? We can see that there's been an assessment done on strategic alignment, business value, risk, and cost. This has resulted in budget information and a benefits analysis, which then HOPEX leverages to conduct an ROI. Using this information, we can begin to understand what, um, what scenarios, what candidate projects do we really want to prioritize? Since budget is not often unlimited, there are only certain projects that can be in scope this year, and perhaps other projects can get pushed out to a later date. The third report that we're going to be focusing on today is a project impact on capability map report. Now this is the same, uh, the same capability map we've been taking a look at, but again, a different perspective. Here, instead of seeing applications or processes in our artifacts section, we're actually able to see the different projects that are going to be associated with our capabilities, really tying in that notion of how are we going to be delivering these capabilities? What is the scope of work? We can begin to understand, are they going to be rationalization projects, improving projects, or innovation projects using the legend at the very top? And if we scroll to the very bottom of this particular capability report, you're going to get a completely consolidated view of what business capabilities are going to be impacted, what's that transformation purpose type, what's the actual project, some basic project management information, and again, that assessment score on strategic alignment, business value, and cost. And finally, an understanding of your risk level. This, this particular view takes all of the information that we've talked about today and consolidates it into a, single, into a single picture perspective of what's actually happening with your capability-based planning. I wanna end our demonstration today by talking about the CIO dashboard. Now the CIO dashboard is a place where we're able to take 
all of the information that we've been creating and push it into an external portal so that stakeholders around the company are able to view this information. More specifically, you're going to be able to create dashboards like the one in front of you, where you're able to understand your application evolution, your technological obsolescence, um, and for example, applications per capability, taking us straight back to that conversation we were just having a few moments ago about the scope of work that we are doing. That was our demonstration within the tool itself today. We've had a chance to see the three different steps, plan, optimize, and transform, and how you're able to leverage those three steps to really create business capability maps and manage your business capability uh, processes within the tool itself. If you want more information, please visit mega.com and go to the Resource Center. You'll be able to find great tools and tips and tricks on the website to be able to leverage the information that I've shown you today um, and really use it for your own use cases and, and business challenges. And finally, I wanted to mention that we do offer a 30-day free, free trial in which you're able to test this environment with your own data. While leveraging all of the out-of-the-box reports and customizations that you may need, because we do provide some hand-holding in the process, and we would love to discuss with you uh, how you can quickly get started. So go ahead and contact us today so that you can get started with your free trial. Thank you so much for your time, and I do hope that this was an informative presentation. And we look forward to speaking with you soon.